So I recently had a baby, but because of COVID, I could not have a birth photographer in the room with me and I was devastated. As a photographer, that was a huge loss to me, but I actually still documented my own birth. My husband and I, we documented my own birth and I'm gonna teach you how we did it. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in on the behind the scenes of our everyday life. This video is letting you in on the behind the scenes of our everyday life. Just recently had a baby. He's a little guy. He's actually a huge guy, but he's, he's still very young. And he was born a couple days before Christmas. Now, before I get into any of this, I want to explain that I am in no way trying to tell you to replace birth photographers or to try to do your own birth photography, even when COVID is hopefully behind us and birth photography is allowed again. That's not what I'm saying. I have had every single one of our births photographed by a professional photographer. Now I am a professional photographer, so I have best friends that are professional photographers. And so my best friend, Jill has photographed all of our births up until this point, um, up until COVID. And, um, and so I would highly recommend if you're not a professional photographer who has a friend who does it to hire a birth photographer, they do amazing work. And these are images that I honestly cherish more than my wedding photos. It's crazy that we would say that, but I love, the photos of us meeting our children for the first time. They mean the world to me. I have albums full of these images. Uh, we even photographed the birth of our son, which we knew was going to be a stillbirth. Um, and I debated whether or not we were gonna do that. They are the most treasured photos of my entire life and will forever be. That's all I have left of him. And so birth photography for us was a big deal. So when we realized our fourth baby, we aren't gonna have anyone there to capture it. Also, fourth baby, knowing we already had a boy, already had a girl, we didn't find out the gender. So we've never done that before. It was a big deal. I'm like, we're, gonna, we're not gonna have any footage of this. We're not gonna have any images. So we created a plan. Now, before I dive into the plan, just know that I realized that I have some special resources in Tyler Harrington who gave us some feedback on how we could actually do this. But my hope is that sharing how we did this will give some of you who might find yourself in a situation or have past clients who are in sad situations of not having birth photography, some hope and some insight into how they actually could have photos from their birth um, taken by themselves. I'm gonna explain that. All right, so why was this necessary? It was necessary because of COVID. Uh, we could not have anyone else except Michael in the room with us, and so we needed to have a way to document, and I didn't want Michael to have to document all this and not get to, not get to hold my hand. I needed him, all right? This was a natural birth for a 10 pound, one ounce baby, so I didn't, in the moment, I knew I was not gonna need Michael to be standing there with a the camera documenting it. I was gonna need to be squeezing the life out of his hand. So I wanted Michael to be present for the birth, but I also wanted pictures. So this is what we realized, um, especially with the help of Tyler, is that we were not gonna be able to do like a remote uh, like a timer situation or like have Michael have remote and just be clicking. We really just needed to continuously film a 4K video of the birth and then take full screen still screenshots of moments during the video to create our images from. So my thought was that we would have like half an hour of footage to take stills from and I would find something that was great, but really this baby came so fast, we only had four and a half minutes of actual footage. So that was not what we were preparing for, but even with only four and a half minutes of footage, um, we were able to, to grab images that I ultimately wanted. Now, I do wish that I could see Michael's face more. You can only see Michael's shoulder. Um, you can tell Michael's crying, which I loved. Um, but ultimately, I, like, I did get to see the first time I like held this baby boy. So, um, and his name is Rhett and he's adorable. So I love the way that this turned out, but I wanted to share our experience because um, it was a fast birth. This wasn't like a drawn out process. We basically pressed record as soon as I got back on the bed and the baby was here four minutes later. So let me break down some tips as to how we can make this happen for you. So what we did, we took my R6, my mirrorless camera that I talked about how much I love, records 4K video and I put a 50 millimeter lens on it. Now you could use other lenses depending on placement. For us, we had other lenses with us, but a 50 millimeter worked. Michael took a tripod, put the R6 on a tripod with a 50 millimeter. Um, and let's say like I'm laying in the bed, Michael placed this to the side of us 
um, to the side of the bed where the nurses weren't going to be moving around. I wasn't really hooked up to anything. It was a natural birth. But if you were going to be hooked up to things, you want to put the camera on the opposite side of where all the cords are going to be. So from a technical perspective, um, you need to know that for a lot of cameras, especially the R6, it's a 30 minute window of filming. So you don't want to set it, uh, you know, your camera to record and then you hit the 30 minute mark and all of a sudden it shuts off and the baby's born. You don't realize it stopped recording. That would be so sad. Um, so it's a 30 minute window. So you want to make sure you kind of, maybe you even say like, okay, you press record and set a timer. Like I, you got to figure out a way to not miss the fact that it's going to shut off automatically and you don't want it to do that in the tension of everything getting like, you know, oh, baby's about to come and you forget to check that. So maybe set a timer, 30 minute timer. Just a side note, when you start and stop, it restarts your 30 minute window. So it's not like you, you film for 15 minutes, stop it. You only have 15 minutes left. No, you, you restart that 30 minute. However, um, you do want to make sure you have a lot of card space because 4k video and you want 4k video so your screen grab can be as clear as possible. 4k video takes up a lot of space. So you want to take extra, um, SD cards and you also want to make sure you test this at home. Um, we tested this at home. We called Ty, we talked through settings. Um, and when we got to the hospital, as far as selecting settings, so I'm in labor and Michael's talking to me about what his ISO should be. And I'm like, you're going to have to wait. Like, I was not, I was not in a good mood. Um, so I honestly don't remember exactly what his settings were, but because we didn't have like this downtime in the hospital before the baby came, it was kind of like we got there and I was in pain. Um, you know, he, he had his ISO crank through the roof, but the images, again, I didn't care about quality. I just wanted it captured. So especially if you're using the R6, your ISO capabilities are amazing. You can crank that ISO up to a decent amount, um, and then make sure your shutter is in a safe place. So that leads me to another point. Make sure your shutter is not, um, super low. You want to have a higher shutter so that when you take that screen grab, you don't have motion blur. Even though our shutter was in a decent place, I honestly don't remember exactly where it was. Um, I noticed that there were some um, stills that I wanted to grab where Michael was moving and that there was some blur to it. So um, I'm really thankful that it wasn't any lower than it was because it could have really affected my ability to take a really clear, crisp screen grab. So another tip, uh, and we did not use this, but looking back, maybe we, we should have, um, is to think about using and consider using auto for some settings. So maybe auto for audio, um, and also auto for ISO, like for some examples, birth, um, we didn't have enough time for this, but in a lot of more slower, more traditional birth settings, um, right before the baby comes, they might flip on more light so they can see. And, um, and that would really mess up the exposure of these screen grabs, uh, if you don't have auto ISO turned on. So that might be something to consider. Also, um, you know, depending on if this is a, uh, an epidural or natural birth, or fast or slow, the audio levels of that room um, could go from being very peaceful to a screaming baby or a screaming mother to a screaming baby. You might wanna control the audio automatically um, so it's not peaking and you don't lose that, that part of the documenting process. The aperture shouldn't be super, super wide. It'd be better to crank your ISO up a little bit higher and have a little bit uh, larger uh, aperture so that if something like Michael's shoulder situation happens again, you can still make out and have a better chance of having more in focus. So you don't want to shoot super wide open unless you're literally giving birth in the dark, which I highly, I don't think that's going to happen to most people. So, okay. Another thing is that because you're not shooting, there's no raw feature of video. You need to get your white balance straight in camera while it's happening. So you want to make sure you're shooting in Kelvin and you have a custom white balance that is accurate um, while you're actually recording. Last tip is that if you are using an R6, you want to make sure you have facial tracking turned on, a facial tracking autofocus turned on because um, it's going to, if it loses focus, it's going to be searching for a face and refine focus. That's why when it focused on Michael's shoulder, as soon as he moved a little bit, it refound my face and focused back on me, which meant that when the baby like came up on my chest, it was focused where it needed to be focused. And I'm so thankful. So, um, so that's some, some things to pay attention to. I will say overall, I thought this was such a negative. Like I, I am so sad that our best friend couldn't be there to capture it. That would have been my preference, but 
the hidden blessing in all this was that we have the first video of a birth that we've ever had. I've never had a video of one of our babies coming into the world. And I honestly cherish the video of him coming into the world more than I do the images, which is fascinating. So it was kind of a, a cool gift in the midst of a disappointing thing um, that we have a video of him being born. Um, it's actually pretty PG. You don't really see anything, but you see the process of him like, oh my God, she's here and meeting him and, and crying and it was beautiful. So I'm thankful that we have a video. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> So, so I hope that if you are in a situation where you are about to have a baby, you're, maybe you're a photographer, you just want birth photography and you think there are no options for you, this could be an option. This could be a way to document your, your baby's arrival into the world without being able to have a photographer present in the room. So I hope this was helpful. If you want to hear more about how we document our life in non-birth situations, we have some videos about that that you can find on our channel about our family yearbook, about how I use my big camera around the house um, proactively. It doesn't just sit in my closet. I have a lot of tips and tricks about how you can document your family in a beautiful way and actually, actually capture the people you love most um, as beautifully as you capture your clients. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Bye. Bye.